Hello everyone, I'm Susan Lee McDonald and welcome back to my show, The Interview. Hollywood has got to be the hottest entertainment scene in the world, with countless beautiful and handsome people coming and trying to be the next superstar. It's not easy to succeed in Hollywood, and especially in such a competitive industry, there's someone always wanting that special job. Today we're going to meet a Korean who has lived the dream of dreams. She has become a super Hollywood art director. We're going to meet Han Yi Jung, who is so successful that you're going to learn so much about her life and what it's like to be in Hollywood. Countless people flock to Hollywood with dreams of making it big in the world's top film industry. But Han Yu Jung, who had lived in Korea most of her life, successfully established herself as a production designer and art director in Tinseltown. After graduating from university in Korea, Han Yu Jung headed over to America in pursuit of her dream, which was to study set design. Although she was hardworking and driven, that didn't guarantee her success in Hollywood. She faced many challenges and hardships before she could finally get a chance to prove herself. Her inspirational story begins right now. I'd like to welcome you to my show. It's such a pleasure to have you here. Thank you. So tell us about some of the projects that you're currently working on. Um, I just finished, before I came to Korea, um, working on this set that um, it's for, it was a small set, but we had to make this set versatile okay. because this set is used to be, uh, it's going to be used for CNN and Fox uh -huh. interviews or sometimes it's kind of news desk type of, type of sets. Okay. So um, yeah, that that's what I just finished. If you're doing a set for a client and they have all these different requests mm -hmm. that you really try to not only meet their expectations, but want to do something a little bit different than what's already been done before. Yes. Because let's say, for example, these the news desk mm -hmm. scene mm -hmm. or these interview sets tend to look kind of similar from mm -hmm. place to place to place. Mm -hmm. So how do you create something that looks a little bit different and that gives a little of your own flavor? Oh, that's a good question, but difficult question too. But um, because, you know, every set I think it's all about the balance mm. because, again, like you said, there's something maybe that I want, but it's not all about me. Mm. And, you know, I cannot ignore my client's opinion because ultimately what makes him or her happy mm -hmm. is what they want, yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> and I'm hired. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, but then at the same time, I don't want to create something that looks like you've seen it before. Yeah. And, then, so, but then at the same time, sometimes if you create something so unusual and new, they don't like it. Because mm. they don't want it to be too experimental. Because mm -hmm. they want you to keep that, the flow of what other people did mm -hmm. or are doing, yes. but maybe a little bit different. I see. Hello. She's the new designer that we've had working with us. A drama romance Richie, film last night that. about an upper class move? couple ah, from New York Alex. spending a night together received Hi. praise for its sophisticated backdrop. Better Luck Tomorrow, it debuted at the Sundance Film Festival where it was nominated for the Grand Jury Prize. I am doing veggie floors. She worked her magic on numerous films, yes. ranging from low-budget oh, indie absolutely. films to blockbuster films. Good for you, lady. Good for you. I'm so. She has worked with famous producers and production companies, including Paramount, Warner Brothers, ESPN, and NBC, and established herself as an art director and production designer by delivering what her clients want and need at all times. I wonder what an art director does. A production designer, art director, is it the same thing and what do they do? I just want to, for the audience, I just want to clarify what art director does and production designer 
does too. Okay. Production designer is the head of art department mm -hmm. and uh, in charge of the overlook of the film mm -hmm. and TV and commercial and music videos. But art director is the right hand person of the uh, art, uh, the production designer. I see. And art director is usually in charge of building, like construction. Oh wow! And uh, they're the one oversees everything. So let's put it this way: production designer is uh, comes up with a co uh, concept for mm -hmm. the whole show, mm -hmm. but art director is the one making it happen. I see. Like uh, physically, they go to set, they go to construction site, they go to like. Uh, shop and see how the building comes through and mm -hmm. all of that and they report it back to production designer mm -hmm. because a lot of times production designer is very busy with a bunch of meetings and scoutings and budgeting and all those not fun stuff sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> what is the most memorable film that mm. you've worked on? <laughs> <laughs> Better Luck Tomorrow is the most memorable film, mm -hmm. not because we s uh, it, 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 it came, um, it made such a remarkable ending, or that uh, it was recognized based uh, compared to what we spent or how small it was, mm -hmm. and then and on top of that, it was first Asian American movie that I felt like it made some marks in Hollywood mm -hmm. as a like original Asian American made film. Mm -hmm. Which is attention. not very common, as no. we know. Yeah, right. as we know, it, it, I mean, so many of them were made, but none of them, or uh, very few of them, mm -hmm. got attention, right? Yes. And uh, but this project made a mark, mm -hmm. and that's how I felt. And also, this project, I went through so many hard times, mm. and uh, I learned a lot. But I, it was very, very challenging and difficult project. Mm. So I think that's why it's very memorable. Tell me about what was it that was difficult working on that project? I, I imagine mm. that no project is an easy project because mm -hmm. you're having to work <laughs> yeah. and create things from your your mm -hmm. your brain and and use that artistic talent but mm -hmm. what was it that was really hard mostly it was a people who were really difficult for me to deal with cuz a i was very young mm -hmm. and b most of the people that work for me were uh, skilled, but they were they were like 20 years senior to me, and they kind of treated me like I don't know anything, mm -hmm. right? But at the same time, I knew what I want, mm -hmm. and I had to explain this to them. And some of the bad people mm -hmm. try to use my um, age or mm -hmm. my to them ignorance. Mm -hmm. They try to use that against. Mm -hmm me yes. and uh, they really did because like for example the painter that I hired mm -hmm. it was very it was one of the most important set we had to finish mm -hmm. it was a set that the end its ending scene mm -hmm. like so it was very uh, important and it was a heavy painting related set and um, painter he started working well, one day we're very close to shoot and he showed up and he goes you know what, I got other job. So it, we're talking about morning. We all showed up. Huh. I'm expecting him to work. Yes. And he's like, I got to go to other work and I'll come back at 6 p.m. Oh I'm my like, goodness. I'm like, you got to be kidding me. And then he goes, no, I'm not kidding. And I will I will be back and I'll finish your show. But in the meantime, I'll put my friend in your show so you, you have somebody. I thought, okay. You know, mm -hmm. thanks for telling me now, but at least he thought about backup plan. Mm -hmm. So I try to deal with his friend, and his friend wasn't the painter. Oh no, it was it, who wasn't even a painter? <coughs> he wasn't. He pretended like, but you know, once you see what he did, mm -hmm. then you could tell like, okay, this guy is not trained painter because wow. he made this like in between the set pieces. Yes. We called the. We call it flat. You know, there's a big piece of wall. Yes. We put it together to yes. create the set. We call them flat. Okay. And then in between flat, there's a gap. Mm -hmm. We had to patch that gap, right? I see. So camera doesn't see that gap mm -hmm. when they try to close up you yes. on you. And then he did that. He did the patching. Usually people do that very thin, but he did it like this thick. Oh. I had to grind them. Oh my goodness, <laughs> you had to. I had to grind them. So oh it was no. more work than actually, um, he, obviously he wasn't helping me. Mm -hmm. He was creating more problem. So I'm like, I can't have this guy. So by the time he came back, this guy mm -hmm. who went to work, I said, I'm sorry, I cannot have your friend here because he did this and that and that. Mm -hmm. And he's like, oh, you're insulting my friend. And he's like, you know what? You know, and then he started like kind of threatening me and stuff. And oh my goodness. 
I figured I had to fire him. Yeah. That was the first project I ever fired somebody. So I had to fire him and mm -hmm. he starts screaming at me saying, <sighs> uh, um, he's like, oh, you fire me? Mm -hmm. And the kind of thing it was like, who are you? Mm -hmm. And then he- You're his boss, is yeah. who you are. <laughs> and then he actually, I remember he pointed at me and he's like, I'm gonna remember you. Mm. That's what he said to me. Mm. And I looked at back, uh, looked back at him, and I said, "I'm gonna remember you too." <laughs> when people think that they can take advantage of you because of your age, or because you're a woman, or because of any number of list of things, uh -huh. um, you see someone's true character come out, and it just oh, yeah. is so disappointing sometimes, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. We usually kind of, as a joke, we say, "Because uh, when you're in the pre-production, mm -hmm. everyone is nice, because <laughs> you have to make <laughs> friends with everyone." Yes. But true person personality comes out on the first day of shooting, mm -hmm. almost immediately, because mm. so many things are happening here and there, and it's real, right? Yeah. It's not pre preparing. Right. This is a real time. And that's, I think, I, a lot of times I see, like, angel turn into evil, <laughs> and then <laughs> that's the day you can find out who's your friend that mm -hmm. you can carry for the rest of the show, mm -hmm. and who's your, like, kind of you know, who's on your blacklist, yeah. per se. Yeah. Um, you've worked on not only movies, but also, is it commercials mm -hmm. and some other videos? Mm -hmm. What are some of the other types of uh, film work that you've done? Um, I've done movies, TV mm -hmm. shows, and uh, commercials, and uh, music videos. Mm -hmm. um, every, that category has its own, I think, character, per se. and. Uh, Music video, I have to say, it was the hardest because I mm. worked like 32, three hours straight <gasps> without any sleep. Ooh. And I almost fell asleep on the freeway while I was driving back home. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's that, not good. No, but it was a fun experience because mm -hmm. you have music. You don't have to worry about sound. You know, mm -hmm. people just play music and some crew members dance and stuff mm -hmm. like that. So it's a fun environment, mm -hmm. but it's hard. But why do you but have to do a music video for 32 hours straight? Is that <laughs> just uh, because it just needed to be done quickly? It usually comes from cheap production uh -huh. because n not only it's the labor part, mm -hmm. usually it's a location. Mm -hmm. um, if you want to do your job properly or others do it properly, you have to get enough time to be prepared for the shoot day, mm -hmm. right? So, but then every day, location charges production. Mm -hmm. And sometimes when production want to save their money, they get like, instead of two, three days of pre-prep yes. days, prep days, they get one day of prep. Mm. That was a situation over there. And it was a one day prep and next day we had to shoot. Mm. And the one day we had to do a lot of things. Like it was a banquet room on mm -hmm. the basement of the hotel <laughs> so we got carpet just typical those carpets and walls and stuff like mm -hmm. that round table we had to clean up um, and then we had to turn it into the jungle like you know mysterious kind of mountain oh my things goodness like <laughs> with no money I had like five hundred dollars as a budget whoa Wait, five, five zero zero. Five, five zero zero. Not five hundred thousand. No, 500. no. Five hundred dollars okay. to get like about fifty plant plants. Mm -hmm. Like we're talking about big trees and mm -hmm. stuff like that, and wallpapers. And I had to create. So my idea was like, okay, we're not going to see the floor, and I had to turn every single column like those yes. to look like a stone. Mm -hmm. And I put all the trees in between and. It worked out, and but I had to beg around the town to, <laughs> to get stuff for like 10 bucks here, 50 bucks here. <laughs> Somehow I made it happen, but wow. that was like, what, over 10 years ago? It was possible then. I don't know if it's possible <laughs> now. <laughs> well, it sounds like you have not only creativity with the work that you do, but in order to get the job done, mm -hmm. you really have to become very creative to get the job itself done. Yes. <laughs> You have to. Yeah. yeah. And then so many also, you have to be really good with mm -hmm. the timing too. Like, mm -hmm. you know, for example, the also one of the shows, uh, it's very impressive to me, or uh, I can mem uh, it's memorable to me, is uh, was a Pepsi commercial. Mm -hmm. And we had to scout seven cities in seven days. Hmm. Yeah, right? You're like, okay. and this is not city next to each other. We're talking about East Coast, West Coast, South, North. We had to travel all over in seven days, so production decided to get a private jet. Uh -huh. And uh, it was 10, 11 men, mm -hmm. uh, male producers, and me. 
<laughs> right? So it was 12 of us to start mm -hmm. traveling. And then some of the uh, producers were also location and location managers and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So we traveled together, hit each city. Minute we land, we dump our luggage in our hotel room. We had to meet yes. downstairs and start scouting the places. Wow. And I had to draw as we scout okay. because the production will utilize this uh, drawing mm -hmm. to uh, present to Pepsi client. I see. So I had to draw and we had to come up with quick idea and then we start like applying those ideas mm -hmm. to the drawing. We fax them over to the client. Wow. And then they will say yes or no mm -hmm. or like giving giving us their own opinion mm -hmm. by the end of the night. So we have to apply that I note see. to next city. So we travel like city after city. Even with just a few thousand dollars, she can completely transform a filming set, making it look like it's worth a million bucks. But before she was given a chance to prove herself, she had to overcome many challenges, including racial and gender discriminations against her. She has a keen eye and pays attention to every little detail, and in Hollywood, she is regarded as an outstanding art director with a creative vision who can create the perfect set that meets the client's needs while at the same time adds her personal touch. So you mm -hmm. have you always wanted to be an art director and production designer? No, actually I went to, I mean I started my, uh, I started doing art since I was 10. Mm. So I thought that was just my destiny somehow mm -hmm. and but I didn't know where in the art who I want to be none of those mm -hmm. and I went to art schools after one after another mm -hmm. um, and in junior high maybe one day I just thought I'm gonna be a great painter you know or a great artist I didn't know what category mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and one day I went to my friend's house and I ran into her vocal teacher hmm. and he happened to just see me and say hey what's your major I told him I I'm my major is art and he goes oh if you're majoring in art why don't you try to be a um, theatrical designer or scenic mm -hmm. designer hmm. he just threw it out there. Mm -hmm. I didn't know what that means, but mm -hmm. somehow that word stuck in my head. Huh. And I came back, I tried to search what that means, but we didn't have internet back then mm -hmm. in the 80s. And uh, I tried to search as much as possible mm -hmm. with very limited sources, but um, somehow I just, I got connected to that word. Huh. So I figured, you know what, I'm gonna be a set designer. So uh, my life completely changed after that because Naturally, I'm a like art person, like you know, like doing drawings mm -hmm. and paintings in very natural way. I don't like to do like artificial kind of. We call it kuzong, mm -hmm. and uh, in order to get into our uh, college in mm -hmm. Korea back then, yes. um, if I want to be majored in design, I had to learn how to do this like you know very clean lines and everything perfect kind of looking kuzong. Mm -hmm. We call it. And I hated that. Mm. And I'm like, is there any way I can continue to draw like I did before, but mm -hmm. design is my major. And there was no way, right? Mm. So I had to force myself to learn that and I got into college. And But uh, uh, when I choose a college, mm -hmm. I chose the major, it's the closest as possible to set design. I bet at that time, the, the title of mm -hmm. a, a set designer was mm -hmm. almost unfamiliar in Korea. Yes. And if you were to say to someone, oh, my dream is to become a set designer. Of course, everyone nowadays with the musicals and mm -hmm. operas, Korea is so culturally just uh, vibrant that people mm. know what that is. But back in the day, yeah. what would people say to you when you said that that's what you wanted to do? They said, I'm crazy. They're like, do you even know what this means? I'm like, no, I don't. But I just <laughs> want to be that person. <laughs> and they're like, then you're crazy, right? <laughs> Including my parents. My mm -hmm. parents said, you know, uh, I don't know if you heard this term called tantara. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> my parents, parents, <laughs> without not uh, without knowing what that means, mm -hmm. immediately their impression was, okay, that's tantara's job. Oh. So why you want to go there? Mm -hmm. You have this great 
great major, mm -hmm. you know, the interior design. My dad is a developer slash architect. Mm -hmm. So it's so along that area. And yes. my parents thought you're already doing something great. Maybe you can follow your father's footsteps. Mm -hmm. Your father can help you. Um, it seemed like a perfect future yes. fits with my major. And then now I'm trying to do this and they're like, we don't understand, mm. right? So it was every single step I take, try to get uh, get closer to set design yes. was a battle, not wow. just outside of our family, inside of our family mm -hmm. too. So when, uh, if ever, did your family start to uh, support you with your desire to do set design? Mm. What happened after you went to college for interior design? Oh, um, <laughs> first year of college, I asked my dad, can I go to States? Because I, one thing I knew mm -hmm. was in States, they, it, there is this major mm -hmm. existing, mm -hmm. you know, set design, theatrical design, scenic design, even finding that term, yes. theatrical design or scenic design. To me, that was a difficult already, <laughs> but I found it out. Mm -hmm. And then I'm like, okay, I have to go to States. And I asked my dad and he's like, why don't you try to finish the college you went to good school try to finish mm -hmm. so i finished and he's like why well, don't you get married and go there with <laughs> your husband i was like this is totally out of my plan you know mm -hmm. I, uh, the husband or man figure wasn't part of my future plan mm -hmm. at the time so uh, that's when i realized all this i was actually depressed for like six months you know mm -hmm. i was very like i didn't i couldn't find anything i wanted mm -hmm. so i start playing pool then <laughs> you know hanging out with friends and i did things that my parents didn't like me to do I like see. serving in cafeteria mm -hmm. and stuff like that and one day i realized i'm just wasting my time and still i do have a dream mm -hmm. and i should pursue that and i sat down and i start questioning myself I'm like what can I do to pursue that dream that I just kind of forgot about for six months and then what did you decide uh, I decided to get a job and make money <laughs> so then because I realized all these complaints I mm -hmm. had towards my parents or my surroundings because mm -hmm. my friends are like going to like Europe mm -hmm. or states to you know study further I'm like why is it so difficult for me mm -hmm. right and then I realized the reason why I'm torturing myself or like I'm disappointed is because I was trying to lean on my parents mm -hmm. or trying to get support from someone else mm -hmm. instead of I'm supporting myself. Mm -hmm. So I figure I should support myself. So that's why, and then you, you know, immediately you think, okay, then I need money, right? Yes. <laughs> so I need a job and I need a really good job to mm -hmm. pay really good money too. <laughs> so so uh, were you trying to yeah. get a job so that you could save enough to go to the States and do the major that you really wanted to yes, do? Yes, that's what I wanted. Mm. And the, but I, I didn't want to find a job. It's like completely out of the course because mm -hmm. I, I, everything I, do or did, I want that to be helpful towards my future. Yes. So I wanted to find a job like interior design because mm -hmm. then I can learn something in that field. Maybe I can use that in the future mm -hmm. for sets, mm -hmm. right? And did, it did really help. That's great. So yeah. I got a job in uh, one of the famous um, companies in Korea mm -hmm. and uh, I was an uh, interior designer. I secretly, after the work, mm -hmm. the, uh, I came home mm -hmm. and I locked my door and I started preparing the portfolio mm -hmm. because I had to start applying to school. I so I did that completely secretly uh, from my parents and my coworkers, mm -hmm. my sister, all of them. Wow. So uh, I, but then my portfolio, each portfolio was like this thick mm -hmm. and I sent it to very few schools and I was waiting for the admission and I got admission and uh, that's when I broke the news to everyone. Wow. And I said, at that time it wasn't, can I go because I have a, uh, I have a uh, admission. Mm -hmm. It was like, I'm going to go and they have to follow. It takes a lot of courage for someone who has never lived in the States or in another country and who has this passion as you did to want to become uh, an art director to, mm -hmm. to do what you did. It was not easy and uh, when I landed over there I felt like I was dropped from the plane by myself <laughs> and it was desert <laughs> you know and uh, people still even even American friends um, that I met at the time, they thought it was very brave. Mm. And, but I didn't think 
I felt any fear. Mm. I felt more excitement because I was so excited to be there. Mm -hmm. I was so excited to have that opportunity to, to learn. Yes. And soon after, uh, even before I enjoyed that excitement, the IMF hit. Mm -hmm. So the um, economic crisis in the late '90s. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. IMF, um, that economic crash hit, and I got a ca phone call from my parents in Korea saying you have to come back because mm -hmm. we cannot really support you. Even their support, I asked them if they can support me for one year, mm -hmm. that would be great. I had some money that I saved, it wasn't enough. Mm -hmm. So I needed a little bit extra help. Mm -hmm. uh, but that, they, they couldn't afford that mm -hmm. either. So um, the joy and excitement was about to crash. Even Americans find it difficult to be established in Hollywood and to even do one film. How did you get started and how have you sustained such a long career there? Um, I think I, the break in to Hollywood, a lot of people say it's the hardest thing. To me, that kind of happened easier mm. or easily. Uh, I worked on this uh, Korean film called Love and mm -hmm. that was my very first production design project. Um, but after the project, the line producer was American mm -hmm. and he kept uh, two people from entire staff. And one was me, the other person was American uh, for safety. He took these two people to his next film. And uh, that's how I continue or started to know more people and start mm -hmm. breaking into Hollywood features. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, I don't know what was the key that I could stay there longer. All I remember I did was I just gave 200% on each job I did mm -hmm. and try to come up with, in every single situation, whether it's difficult or not, I try to come up with the best idea I can think of and I try to come up with best attitude mm -hmm. to deal with that problem mm -hmm. or work and did my best mm -hmm. and try to be honest with my crew. Mm. You know, attitude is so important mm -hmm. working at any job. Yes. And no matter how skilled someone is at something, if we have a bad attitude or if someone has a bad attitude, you don't want to work with that person. Yes. And they quickly develop a really bad reputation. How is it that under such stress mm -hmm. that you were able to maintain such a positive or, or good attitude towards your work? Because what we do on set every single day is extremely hard work, mm -hmm. extremely unexpectable too. Mm -hmm. So when you are 100% prepared and you show up, some unexpected stuff happens on yes. set. You just have to quickly adapt that mm -hmm. situation and come up with next, mm -hmm. come up with solution. No one wants somebody sitting there is like, oh, we didn't think this, we didn't plan this. We all know that already. We right. don't want to hear the complaint. Right. We just want to move <laughs> right. to next. Right. And I learned it pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. And I realized I don't want to hear what others do that, like mm -hmm. those complaining. Mm -hmm. Maybe someone who hired me mm -hmm. don't want to hear that from me either. Right. So I try to come up with ideas mm -hmm. and solution. And I think that impressed the, a lot of people mm -hmm. in that circumstance. As you were just starting out in Hollywood, uh, did you ever have to take a job that wasn't related to what you wanted to do? Yes, I did. Um, there were times that I, were, uh, I was absolutely out of job and I was broke. Mm -hmm. And one day I realized I had only $100 in my bank and my rent alone was $400 mm -hmm. at the time. And so I realized I really have to go out and do something, mm -hmm. feed myself. Otherwise, I'll be on the street. So then I took, uh, I went out and I found myself uh, the waitress job at mm -hmm. sushi restaurant. Mm -hmm. So, wow. Yeah, I totally felt like a loser or I felt so confused. Because mm. every day you're questioning yours. Uh, I was questioning myself, okay, I fought so hard to come here at mm -hmm. first place. And I quit great job to come here. Mm -hmm. And I graduated and now I have a master of fine art mm -hmm. <laughs> and I'm here serving sushi dishes. What am I doing to myself? Mm -hmm. What am I doing to my career? Why am I wasting my time here? What if I go back to Korea? And then when I question that, I already see my friends who went back to Korea and they're start, mm -hmm. starting up their career fast mm -hmm. and great. I'm like, why am I staying here? What 
what kind of stuff do I want here? Mm -hmm. That was a question I had to ask myself every single day. Mm -hmm. It was very difficult because I could not find the, uh, the answer, wow. right? And, but I had this feeling that I believe, mm -hmm. or the belief I had. I have to spend more time here mm -hmm. until I see that I've done my best mm -hmm. or I've done and I've seen it all or I've gone through this all the way. Mm -hmm. That was a thing that I wanted to search. So therefore, um, I figured I have to just endure this time. Mm -hmm. Let this time pass and maybe I can figure something out. She was an ordinary girl without a dream. But when she turned 16, someone recommended that she become a stage designer. And since then, that's all she's lived for. Even when she finally entered Hollywood, things didn't become any easier. Despite the few mistakes along the way, she continued to move forward, never losing sight of her goal. She turned her mistakes into learning opportunities and soon became one of the highly sought after art director and production designers in America. As an art director, you create something from absolutely nothing. Mm -hmm. And it's uh, something that I think a lot of people just kind of take for granted because we watch movies, we see TV shows all the time, but the production doesn't just happen by itself. Mm -hmm. Tell us about one of your most uh, memorable or unforgettable kind of set designs and, and set productions to date. Um. One of the moments that, maybe the moment that I don't forget or uh, remem I remember forever, was th this TV show called uh, Halfway Home. Mm -hmm. We, it, it was like, it was the house, actual location. The pick was the house, Victorian style house. Mm -hmm. It was falling apart. The, you could see the steps to the second floor. If you step forward, then you could feel it's about to collapse. Mm. And I think of some um, scary movie, the, the horror movie was shot before our production. So I could see the corn syrup all over the, wall, uh, the, the walls. Corn so syrup meaning? Like red syrup that oh. decreased the blood <laughs> on film. It was <laughs> everywhere. And carpet, it was on the floor. It smelled like urine. Mm. But <laughs> I, I don't know what was the history. But mm -hmm. the house was really in bad shape. Mm. Um, even producers came to me, he's like, you got 10 days to convert this place to, um, to TV set. Can you make this happen? And I said, that's why I'm here for. Mm -hmm. And they're like, okay. Even if they liked the confidence coming from me, mm -hmm. they were still very skeptical. Yes. And uh, so, but then we made it happen. And uh, with, over the course of period, their eyes with this doubts, and we have like six, seven different producers and everyone had their own opinion mm -hmm. about the color, carpet versus linoleum or any mm -hmm. decisions, major decisions that I had to make yes. and I had uh, I needed their approval. Mm -hmm. I, ne I had to deal with seven different voices. Wow. It was very political. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had to paint the living room like six, seven times because one day it's yellow, one day it's green, one day it's orange. Mm -hmm. You know, it was all different opinion, but we made it through. Finally, right before the, the shoot day, uh, when I walked into the set, those seven producers who gave me the skeptical eyes mm -hmm. in the beginning all got up and gave me the standing ovation. Oh. <laughs> So that was nice. When you're working on set, uh, and it's not a completely built up set that's in the studio, and you go someplace else, whether it's nature or uh, a hundred year old mm -hmm. uh, Victorian house, I imagine that you have to be very careful to make sure that it's kind of back in its uh, original state where you found it, or better. Mm -hmm, yeah. <laughs> Is there some stress with that? Oh yeah, I mean, there's always places. It's very delicate. Whether it's twenty million dollar Hollywood mansion we shot, or the hundred years old cafe mm -hmm. was in Philadelphia called a city tap a city tavern. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm and familiar with that place. Oh yes. yeah, yeah. You know? uh -huh. yes, yeah. yes. It's uh, the floor is original. Everything mm -hmm. is original there, and um, 
someday, uh, one day, I think, uh, I think it was the end of the production. We all finished, and the owner found out little tiny crack on the mirror. It's a hundred years old mirror. Oh no! And the replacement value was two million. <gasps> and the owner was going crazy. It's like somebody broke this mirror. Oh and, no! Uh, what happened? Uh, I think they settle with mm -hmm. the owner. The production usually, when that happens, they took they take the owner to the side and they kind of try to search where the problem started mm -hmm. or was it there before we came. Mm -hmm. And so as an art department to prot uh, protect mm -hmm. ourselves, what I do, usually I video film every single corner because mm -hmm. a lot of times our department is the first department to be blamed. Mm -hmm. They just think that way. I don't yeah, know why. Yeah. We're the most careful <laughs> department. <laughs> and then usually they think it's art department. Mm -hmm. So to make my own evidence, mm -hmm. I have to film every single corner. Mm -hmm. And uh, I have to also film, uh, I take pictures. Mm -hmm. So not only videotape, I take pictures of everything. Yeah. So when we tr uh, bring it back, um, we, tr we compare every single shot to that corner I and see. bring it back to where it was. Such meticulous work yes. that's necessary. Yes, and wow. a lot of times production gets help from art department. Mm -hmm. They come to me and say, Yujung, do you have any records or any uh, documents mm -hmm. or pictures to prove this place was like this before? Mm -hmm. And I saved them a lot of times too wow. with my picture. That's fantastic that you do that. That's probably why the filmmakers choose you time and again and you've gained their trust. Mm -hmm. uh, it's it's not easy to to build a good reputation and it's easy to lose a reputation in just one kind of project yeah. and you've been able to continue to do great work getting a lot of respect from those that uh, are uh, looking for the best. I have to fight with myself a lot of times and the thing is you know once you get a little bit comfortable and or you feel like you know a lot that's where it's dangerous because mm. uh, uh, you can start feeling into uh, falling into the mannerism and earlier on of my career I saw this production designer mm -hmm. he was a paramount guy his drawing is beautiful and he's from theater so he got very strong sense of sets mm -hmm. um, but he told me uh, but one day he told me, Yujang, I just want to share this story with you because he said he was a Paramount guy for 10 years and one day his phone stopped ringing. Mm. That's really scary. Mm -hmm. he, and he had kids and he has, you know, he had to send his kids to college. He got this house he purchased and cars. He's locked into all these payments and mm -hmm. phone stopped ringing. That's everyone's fear, yes. right? And after, he couldn't figure out why. And that story made me feel like I need to find out why mm -hmm. to prevent me being that person. Mm -hmm. And I start asking <coughs> my friends or other production designer or my mentors, asking their opinion. Mm -hmm. And their opinion was because maybe he fell in his own mannerism mm. and maybe he was creating same thing again and again mm -hmm. and that's what made people stop calling him wow that's pretty profound it is and uh, i decide well it's important to have your own style because mm -hmm. sometimes that's why people call you yes. right because they see your style mm -hmm. and they like it mm -hmm. but at the same time you have to keep yourself distant mm -hmm. from your own style and the the way i do is i just open myself up to mm -hmm. everything mm -hmm. and wherever i go whatever i do i try to open my all the senses, mm -hmm. my eyes, my smell, you know, taste, everything. So I can adapt all that to me without mm -hmm. noticing. I'm like keeping that and stack them up in my own library. And mm -hmm. when I need something, at least I know it's there mm -hmm. and it will start, uh, it, it start coming out little by little. A completely empty room turned into a high-end restaurant with a beautifully textured curtain and lighting added in all the right places. A fabulous filming set with New York as the backdrop. It just sends me to a rage of no return. <laughs> An uninhabited island turns into a beautiful paradise where everyone wishes to be. 
creating something out of nothing. Han Yujung asserts that talent and skills are definitely essential, but what's even more important is to build trust with the people you work with for your talent to truly shine. I hear that you have a studio. Tell us about that. Mm. Yeah, I have a little art studio mm. slash production. Um, in 2008, I created this Han Studios to um, create some content uh, to be the bridge between mm. Korea and US, mm. maybe more specifically Korean entertainment and Korean, um, uh, the U uh, Hollywood. It could be overall, like, but then it covers culture, mm -hmm. art, and entertainment. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to create some content, anything to relate these two countries mm. to, and put these two countries to one. Um, so I created some content related Korean food to show more information about Korean food to American mm -hmm. people. Because I thought I want Korean culture to be embedded in U.S. or mm -hmm. embedded in the world. Mm -hmm. and I figured the interest comes from knowledge. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to create the knowledge. Mm -hmm. That's why I start spreading out this knowledge to people. And then the knowledge will c catch some interest, mm -hmm. attention, mm -hmm. and then that will spread out. And then eventually, Korean culture will be more embedded to American culture. How do you think that uh, Korean contents mm -hmm. um, can be put more into the American mainstream? Yes. Oh. I'm very interested in that subject. Also, I'm pushing myself to go in there, actually make that example happen. Mm -hmm. That's one of the challenge I gave it to myself. Mm -hmm. um, I'm actually developing one, um, this project mm -hmm. that it keeps Korean originality, and but it also has a story, contains Korean story, mm -hmm. but we're gonna actually drop this into Hollywood mainstream. Some people could say, why we have to go to Hollywood? Why do we have to break into uh, Hollywood mainstream? Why can't we just sustain in Asia mm -hmm. and be popular in here? And that's it. Mm -hmm. um, I think the reason, A, market is big there. Mm -hmm. Anything, and B, also anything succeed in US mm -hmm. happen to succeed worldwide. Mm -hmm. That's already proven. So to us, or to me, I take that as a challenge. Mm. Let's try it. So create something, maybe just like no one expected Sai will create something that will work worldwide. Right. And it worked mm -hmm. and it continues to work. Maybe I can create some movies uh, that, that it works in Hollywood mainstream mm -hmm. with my own original, original idea. Mm -hmm. That's my challenge and I want to prove it to myself one day in very near future. <laughs> I hope I can <laughs> see some of that too. So tell us some about your future plans. Mm -hmm. uh, tell us something about what your pursuits are, what your dreams are going forward. It seems like you have a lot of ideas. <laughs> Yeah, I'm very greedy <laughs> <laughs> when it comes to dream mm -hmm. and pursuing something. Sometimes I pursue whole different things, like so many areas. But um, right now, my main goal is actually I want to expand my horizon. Mm. And I, like I said earlier, I want to try to be a producer, mm -hmm. create the contents that um, it works for both country mm -hmm. and where it works in Korean, uh, Hollywood with Korean originality. Mm. And that's one. And two is also I want before, I think it maybe became more um, specific lately, mm -hmm. but before it was all about me mm -hmm. and I move forward, like straight forward. But as I get older, I kind of want to start sharing. Mm. And one of the sharing, I relate that to education. So I want to start sharing what I know to people who's been emailing me or who's been inspired mm -hmm. by me mm -hmm. or want to do something that I did, but they don't know how mm -hmm. or they don't have any source. Mm. And this really struck me when I met this little student from um, New York. Mm -hmm. She grew up in Korea, but she got inspired by me and she went to New York. 
but she contacted me and said she wants to come and visit LA to see me Aww. because she wants to know more about the production design and art director. Mm -hmm. In fact, she was attending New York school. Hmm. When I had a conversation with her, I realized the difficulty of breaking into this industry mm -hmm. is almost the same difficulty as 15 years ago. Uh -huh. With so all this that hasn't changed at all. No, <laughs> I, even with today's technology, smartphone and internet and all of that, she was going through exact or maybe more frustration mm -hmm. than I went through. Mm -hmm. And that really inspired me uh, and pushed me more to teach people or help those mm -hmm. people to know more. And I want them to Sometimes I don't want them to go through what I went through. Maybe mm -hmm. they can skip mm -hmm. all the difficulties or unnecessary experience that sure. I went through mm -hmm. by being taught by me. So can we see in your future you training these kind of junior art directors? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How soon do you think we can see that? As soon as uh, by this winter. Oh, <laughs> fantastic. <laughs> Han Yujung has achieved her dream of becoming a successful art director. Now, she has turned her eyes over to something else. Her goal now is to serve as a mentor for those entering the industry and help them get established in Hollywood without too many trials and errors. The purpose of doing this, from my point of view, is I want you to see their imagination level. It's not about who draws better than the others, right? And then um, I've seen so far they had an extremely hard time making their imagination transform that to the image. This is the problem or the, the difficulty a lot of Korean students have, even if they go outside of the country as adult. We, used to, we always get used to be told what to do. So they have a hard time getting their own imagination in their head and try to express that. Why do you think it is that we see so few Asian Americans in Hollywood in general, but especially mm -hmm. in art direction? So few Koreans. Yeah. It might be a prejudice, you know. Um, I don't know if that's the reason, but I can see from other point of view. For example, there are a lot of Europeans, mm -hmm. you know, because America maybe think Europeans are very artistic. Yes, they do have a history lot lot longer than American and uh, they do have this Italians are known for their fashion sense and their great sensibility of art mm -hmm. French British you know and we have to compete with them mm -hmm. not only American but also a bunch of Amer uh, Europeans mm -hmm. too and maybe people think Asian people are so specific or special with their own culture mm -hmm. And it's different. It's, we, we divide it up as West and East. Mm -hmm. And yes, we're from East. And I think, but overall, that will ch be changed mm -hmm. because these days, world becomes global. Mm -hmm. It becomes one, or it starts to be one. Mm -hmm. Or maybe the process has started already. With that movement, maybe the prejudice will change one day dramatically mm -hmm. because we become one then maybe having sensibility from east mm -hmm. it's actually unique and mm -hmm. great mm -hmm. and it helps american or helps west people from west because mm -hmm. i think the perfect point will be when it's mixed yes. in the middle yeah so <laughs> <laughs> i say yes to being mixed <laughs> yes. <Hey. laughs> i like that <laughs> last but not least mm -hmm. um what does hollywood mean to you you don't um, Hollywood, it is, it gave me, uh, it's obviously gave me the great opportunity to learn not only what I know right now, I learn life. And I learn how to become the great person mm -hmm. just to be in there. And so it's a great teacher to me. Hollywood is a great teacher 
but at the same time, it's a very tough teacher because mm -hmm. uh, it taught me happiest moment of my life, but at the same time, it taught me the toughest moment of my life. And it is challenging daily. So I guess it's like kind of love and hate relationship <laughs> in a sense. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, I, I think it, I l tend to lean a little bit towards love more than hate. <laughs> 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 yeah, that's how I feel every day with Hollywood. Mm. It's been such a pleasure to talk to you and learn so much more about your profession and also about your experiences, not just as a, a Korean who's gone to the States and been successful in this uh, industry that few Asian Americans are succeeding, but to hear about your perseverance and your mm. absolute commitment to uh, doing such an amazing job. And I think it's a testament to your hard work that you are where you are now, and I wish you all the success going forward. Oh, thank you. Great, and it's such a pleasure to meet you. Thank pleasure you. meeting you too. <laughs>